Alan Christian here for Flickering Myth Gaming. With 2021 in the books, we here at Flickering Myth wanted to have a look back on our very favorite video game releases from this past year. These are in no particular order, and yes, I have two entries on this list because I wanted a nice round five. Plus, I'm the one making the video, so deal with it. First off, we have Cruelty Squad. At first glance, this game is probably one of the most appalling things you've ever seen. Second glance doesn't change much there. Make no mistake, this game is appalling. This goes beyond surface level, beyond the vile aesthetic that many have mistakenly dismissed as a crude joke. At its heart, Cruelty Squad is a dark comedy meticulously crafted to leave you feeling uneasy. With a dissonant and unpleasant soundtrack to match the offensive visuals, this immersive sim slowly reveals itself to be a biting social commentary, but quickly shows its hand as an incredibly fun, as well as deceptively deep and layered gameplay experience. If you've ever dreamed of using your intestines as a grappling hook on a stealth mission to assassinate powerful technocratic overlords for personal gain and a chance to return your soul to its flesh prison, then this game is for you. Forza Horizon 5 With Forza Horizon 5's irresistible blend of compulsively addictive, just one more gameplay, and peerless presentation, it's not terribly surprising that it's become the most popular racer in the series' history. Playground Games threw players into a lovingly crafted recreation of Mexico for a rarest of icon strewn collectathon games that doesn't end up feeling like a soulless assembly of repetitive missions. The story elements remain toe curlingly goofy, but the moment to moment racing mechanics are first class for the genre, whether playing solo or online. To somehow sweeten the deal even further, Forza Horizon 5 is available at no additional charge on Xbox Game Pass, ensuring dozens of hours of pedal to the metal entertainment await you. Dr. Hakim, they have to stay together. You can't just give up. It takes two. Most games try to sell you on the fact that they offer a giant sandbox to play in. It Takes Two instead offers players a curated toy box full of things to play around with. Each level offers a different mechanic for you and your co-op partner to figure out together and plenty of ways to play around and grief each other. Thankfully, the penalty for death is never more than a few seconds setback, so you never feel too bad for killing your partner. The real fun of the game lies in the little events and toys in every level. Hours can be spent trying to win the mini-games or just experimenting with the physics of the toys laid out for you. Hazelight Studios' narrative can be a bit of a mess at times, but the chaos adds to the charm of the title. Whether it's two people relearning about the reasons they fell in love or plotting the murder of the most saccharine sweet character ever written, there's rarely a dull moment in the plot. When Joseph Ferris appeared at the Game Awards in 2017 to introduce A Way Out and share his opinion on the Oscars, Few would imagine he would be back to claim an award for Game of the Year. But with It Takes Two, he and Hayes Light have put together what is easily the best co-op experience ever released. Uh -huh, yeah, you feel that? Oh my, kisses, you like? What is wrong with that guy? Well, this should take too long. Psychonauts 2 Psychonauts 2 might have been a long time coming, yet its arrival this year definitely did not disappoint. From the mind-bending psychic abilities to the acrobatic level traversal, this game has certainly been one to sit up and take notice of this year. The 16 years since the last entry in the series have certainly given Double Fine more than enough time to lovingly craft a worthy story and new characters. The continuation of Raz's story is something that must be experienced and newcomers are not going to be left out as the game does an excellent job of filling in the events of the first game. Psychonauts 2's opening level, which takes place inside of the mind of a deranged dentist, 
is certainly one of the most memorable levels in gaming that I've experienced in a long time. The experience is joy in the form of a long-awaited adventure game. The game boasts some serious creativity and style, with impressive design on every single level you could imagine. The characters, levels, music, and gameplay have all just been shown so much care and attention. This is definitely double fine at their best, creating something that nobody else is doing and making sure it is nothing but unapologetic fun. If Xbox Game Pass owners are waiting to try this title, there is certainly no risk as the game will be certain to put a smile on your face. Last but not least, Metroid Dread. Speaking of long overdue sequels, Metroid Dread is the first original game in the mainline Metroid series in 19 years. Following directly from 2002's Metroid Fusion, Dread returns to the 2D side-scrolling exploration routes of the franchise. In a market saturated with Metroidvania-style indie games, Nintendo and Mercury Steam aimed to craft a premium experience that stood head and shoulders above the new titans of the genre, and they succeeded. Dread is so finely tuned that someone brand new to the franchise can simply show up, follow their own whims, and still find their way through the intended progression with little fuss. However, the additional paths to explore and the ability to sequence break the game make it an ideal experience for genre veterans. One thing that might be repellent to new players is the difficulty. The bosses, mini bosses, and even some of the standard enemies are challenging. The combat is deep and worth mastering. The stealth sections in which you evade the Emmy are a welcome change of pace for the franchise and certainly up the tension in a remarkable way. However, the game is not punishing. Rarely does a death set you back by much, with boss fights and Emmy encounters dropping you back mere seconds before the encounter began. Metroid Dread is a game that has often been lauded as the best in the franchise and even the best in the genre. I'm not certain I can go that far at the moment, but I don't have a substantial argument to the contrary. These have been our selections for Game of the Year from the Flickering Myth Gaming staff. I know some big ones got left off, but these are our personal selections. Uh, we're happy to talk about any of the ones we didn't talk about here in the comments down below, so just drop us a line there. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.